Hi, I'm Dave and I'm here to talk to you about PASS. Before I start, have anyone heard of PASS before? The password store? Yeah, a couple of people? Cool. Um, right, I'm Dave Aldridge, uh, I work at the BNZ as a senior technical specialist. Um, the role is more of a generalist role. Um, there, uh, little, just a second, sorry. Uh, yeah, so infrastructure automation using Puppet and Ansible, Jenkins, OpenShift, a bit of AWS, and basically just learning stuff when people turn up at your desk saying, what's wrong? Um, so there's a lot of that. Um, outside of work, I have a few tech interests in small ARM-based boards, Arch Linux, Arduino, automation, and self-hosting. Uh, for 2019, I set myself a goal to divorce myself from the cloud, including Google and uh, all those evil companies. Uh, so I may do some talks on this in the future, depending on how well it goes. Uh, that's why I started using Pass. Uh, so there's just so many logins, and my brain is so small. I, I just couldn't keep up. So for a start, I would use the same password and same username for every single website, which is just terrible. Um, I'm sure there's a few people out there that do the same thing. Uh, there was actually an XKCD that came out the other day that explained how people think hacking works and how it actually works, where data breaches happen and people just try the same credentials on a different website and you're screwed. Uh, so then I thought I'll try and do a bit of security by obscurity by using the same password but creating a, an email alias for my domain. Um, but that just got totally out of control. I had sort of 50 email address aliases to keep up with and again it was still the same password so that was a bit silly. Was it a good password? It was terrible. It was eight characters, um, yeah. Was <laughs> <coughs> Hunter 2. So, yeah. You know where your fans coming from. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, um, but I gave up before. Yeah. That's all right. Uh, so at LCA this year, I met Martin Craft again and uh, asked him what he used because he's quite a paranoid sort of guy. Um, and he gave me a five minute demo of Pass and I was pretty blown away with um, how well it worked. Um, so I've converted all my passwords to it. Um, so what is Pass? It's basically just a directory of GPG encrypted files that contain passwords. Uh, it's a password secret manager. Uh, it can store metadata for logins, including usernames, logins, URLs, uh, secret question answers. You can chuck anything in there you want. Uh, and it can also generate passwords for you. So um, you can specify complexity or anything really. It's um, pretty good. So getting started, uh, you need to create yourself a GPG key if you don't already have one. There's plenty of guides online for creating them. Uh, the only thing is just uh, keep your private key safe and use a strong uh, strong key phrase for your private key. What was it again? <laughs> that one's a lot longer. Uh, so installing Pass is fairly simple if you're on uh, a sensible operating system. However, um, I'll get back to this later, but it's available for most operating systems. Uh, then you initiate pass on Linux distributions. This just uh, creates a hidden directory in your home folder, and that's where it creates the hidden, uh, the GPG encrypted files. Um, then you just add your file, add your passwords, and you're away laughing. So you're thinking, it's all on your laptop. What happens if your laptop dies? Um, you've lost all your passwords. But luckily it supports Git as a backend. So you can push all your secrets up to Git. Um, it has a very intuitive interface with the um, yeah with the Git interface. You just do pass Git pull, pass Git push, and it, it just works like magic. Um, and the files are stored encrypted in the Git repo. So if someone does manage to pull down your Git repo, they still can't get your passwords unless they somehow manage to get your private key and your passphrase, which hopefully they won't. Um, so copying and pasting, like uh, if you've got your passwords in a spreadsheet or, or whatever you normally do, then you're copying and pasting. But uh, there's a main little plugin for your browser called Browser Pass. Uh, it has a native component and a browser plugin uh, available for Chrome and Firefox. Um, this will actually match the secret name to the browser URL. So say if you went to meetme.co.nz uh, or meetme.com, whatever it is, um, you've got the little browser pass icon up on the top. Click on that. It'll search through your passwords for a matching URL and uh, populate it, uh, populate the username and password. And this is probably 99% successful. 
sometimes you get the odd website where dodgy things happens and you, know, you just fall back to the CLI, which is not too bad. Just pass minus C and that chucks it in your clipboard. Um, so you might have multiple logins to, to a single site, which um, you would think could be a problem. But luckily the structure supports multiple logins. Effectively it just creates a directory with the name of the website and then you'll have individual logins as individual files in the, in the directory. So that's a fairly simple solution. Um, at work, most of our websites are AD backed, so you've got the same password for multiple websites. Um, so inside that directory, you can create sim links back to your AD credential with the sim link named the <coughs> URL, and uh, it will match it back. Then you just have to change your password in one place, and all of your websites will be updated. Um, you can also have your passwords on your phone. Um, so there's a password store app, definitely for Android. I did not check for iOS, but um, probably. Uh, so you've got to have your GPG private key on your phone uh, and an SSH key on your phone that has access to your Git repo. Um, and it can auto-populate apps, but it's really quite flaky and you're probably better off just using the clipboard and copying and pasting. Um, and if you have a really strong key pa uh, passphrase for your GPG private key, then you're going to have a bad time. But uh, just kind of set up all your apps at once and then you're fine. It will leave it unlocked for a certain amount of time. You can set it for until next reboot or, or invalidate it whenever you feel like it. Uh, so Windows support, uh, as I alluded to earlier, uh, it appears the Windows client has been abandoned. Um, I didn't do any testing with the Windows client, so I'm not sure how good it was or is. Um, but with the Windows subsystem for Linux available on Windows now, in theory you should be able to just install it, pass from the Ubuntu repo or whatever. And uh, I am not sure what the integration with the clipboard and the browser are, because the native component will be running in the WSL, whether it could talk to the browser plugin, I don't know. Um, sharing your password store. So you can initiate a password store with multiple keys. Um, adding a key later might be a different story. I think that would probably require a full export and then another initiation with the extra key and a full import again. Um, can not and geeks use this? Um, my wife is currently using it, so I'm going to go with yes. Uh, we had a is she a non-geek? She is absolutely a non-geek, um, <laughs> yes. Uh, at the start, it took a lot of convincing. She was wondering what it's up to, uh, changing all the passwords and trying to get her to use this magical thing. Um, and there's been a few teething issues. Um, yeah, adding passwords is still a problem for her, but I'm slowly introducing her to Git, and um, <laughs> <coughs> and uh, and the command line. I'm sure she'll get there one day. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But anyone can learn, can't they? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I had. I, I do have my laptop here and I could do a demo if anyone's interested, but I didn't want to tempt the demo god, so I, I didn't bring it up. But um, if you want to talk to me afterwards, I can give you a demo. Um, also, just before, I forgot to say, uh, in my team at work, we are missing a person at the moment, so there's an opening. If anyone's interested in sort of an infrastructure automation-y, devops -y kind of um, role, come and, come and talk to me afterwards and we can... Um, yeah, check your CV in the mix and see what happens. Thank you. Cool. Uh, question? I have a question. Um, so I'm not sure it works the same way, but there are softwares that are just, you have one big password, so you have to know that one. That's only one. And you can either stock your old passwords, or just you can have it generate like random 25 characters, unguessable passwords. Yep. Can you try those two? Uh, sort of like the last passes oh, of the like world? One pass, uh, password. password. So, so those are all in the cloud where those evil companies are, and I wanted to... <laughs> no? Okay. I'm pretty sure you can set them to be only local, but they will be only on one machine, so that's annoying. And then if you want to be a bit of a, I don't know, very secure thing, have you tried two factors of authentication too? Or? I've, I've not. Apparently there was a 2FA plugin for this, but... So same, like part of it is in the cloud, because you need to be, you need it to be clocked with something, but I 
think it's pretty strong. Okay. So if you want first, it is considered to be evil. Well, well two that's weeks ago, right? So that's what you have to what? The yeah. banks are going away from it. Yes. Really? Yes. Oh, well, forget that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do I suggest if you... Wait, what? So <coughs> no, no, that's, I'm serious. That's some, some news for me I as well. I'll have to check, yeah. <laughs> RCA is, uh, is gone. Right, so um, I, I would imagine that you have a, like, as an idea, right? I have a, imagine, like, a, a, a password phrase, a passphrase. I have a, a unique URL of the site I'm going to access to. What prevents me from generating a hash based on these two parameters that will be unique to me personally? Yes, there's a, there's a application which does this. Is it? Which called password maker? Well, that will automatically. It doesn't require you to store anything. You don't have to push and pull anything to give you anywhere. All I do is I do non homomorphic encryption, one way encryption, so it cannot be reversed. Yeah. But the the trick is when you want to keep some some parameter like your your username, then you have to store it somewhere. Oh, you can. But you can consider it. You can use a simple username everywhere. Uh, well, Store it. Who cares about the username? Uh, sometimes the password is in sometimes there are constraints and uh, sometimes it's hard to remember which username you had stored. But yeah, this you can consider this not secure. Alright, you guys can catch up <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I have one question. I have, I've played with pass a little bit, but there's also a cross platform one written in Go called, as you can probably guess, Go Pass. Have you have you had a look at that? It should be pass go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I have not played with that at all. Worth looking into. I think it, I don't know if it's attempting to be compatible with Pass, but it's pretty feature complete and it has the advantage of being quite portable and cross platform. Yeah, no, that sounds good. There is KeePass. So KeePass, you, you could use it with like command line APC align to like access a KeePass file. And you know, you could technically like SSH or like choose SSH of the VPS or something where you have the KeePass files and like it, use the you know, command line there. Cause I think passwords on your phone or plug it in a browser is a sort of make it fun. I mean, like, it's, you know, browsers like, that's a pretty common attack vector, right? You know, having some sort of plugin that would access my password that would make you fun. I would rather like copy them from the command line. I think we can agree though, it's a step up from using the same password. <laughs> 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 What I didn't tell you was I don't actually use the generation, I just use the same passwords. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, the one killer feature for me for like a password manager is the ability to automatically reset your password against the website. So, someone has developed something, oh, I haven't played with it at all, but it, it gives you the ability to reset your password on certain websites. Okay. I've not played with it though, so, okay. yep, I'm not sure. But I wouldn't trust it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, get the, I get the impression that password good and bad practices would be a good topic for a talk here at some point. Oh, it sounds like volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun to correct some misconceptions, yeah. <laughs>